So Marcos declares martial law. What happens? So Marcos declares mar- martial law in 1972 because he says there is a conspiracy between elite politicians and the left. At that time, actually, people were like, Mar- well, the opposition was like, Marcos is a liar. Of course, now we know because there's increasing evidence that this was the one time when he didn't lie. There was, in fact, a conspiracy between the left and elite politicians. And there's a beautiful new book out of Cornell Press that just came out two months ago called The Drama of Dictatorship that actually documents in very fine-grained detail how the liberal party elites and certain other elites and the Communist Party collaborated. So Marcos was not lying. It's an interesting book, actually. It's a kind of it's a kind of Trotskyist critique of the kind of Stalinism of the Communist Party of the Philippines takes him to task for collaborating with the elite. So um, Marcos is not lying. There is actually a conspiracy between elite politicians and the Communist Party. And so in 1972, he declares martial law. And the way, the best way to describe this martial law, as I said earlier, is that it's a, it's a, it's an auto golpe. It's a self coup. So what he did was he used the military to destroy the constitutional order he was leading. In order to create a dictatorship, what that meant was he padlocked Congress, he arrested opposition politicians, he censored the media, and he began ruling by decree. Ideologically, Marcos actually set up a very, on paper, persuasive ideology. He called it the democratic revolution for, from the center to create a new society. And by dev- democratic revolution from the center... That was actually the original name of American Prestige. We had no idea. <laughs> <laughs> he, he said that it was it's a revolution from the center because he was fighting like communists on the left, a revolution against communists on the left, and a revolution against the oligarchs on the right. And, and, he, and he felt that you needed that revolution from the center to cleanse Philippine society. And because it, there was an ideological basis to it, there was a vision to this new society. And because despite the oil crisis and despite the kind of inflationary tensions of the 1970s, the economy was actually in good shape. He was able to get away with it. Like there was, I, I think there was a lot of quiescence from the middle class and also the upper class who were also sick and tired of the student activists who were making a mess for most of the early 1970s. Can we talk, what, what do you mean by that? Because I imagine the students came from that class. So this is an intra-class phenomenon of like the classic, the older people are annoyed at the younger people yeah. because well, the younger well, people you know, are annoying. But <laughs> <laughs> so what's the Filipino new left? I actually have no idea. What's the Filipino new left? So let's uh, let's just think about this in terms of my own family background. My my father was actually a communist at this time and a student activist at the University of the Philippines, and he dropped out. Also, oh, of- Lissandra, this is a filial issue here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's I, I think it's, it to personalize it makes it a bit more interesting. Well, actually, both my parents were 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 student activists during this period, and their grandparents. Um, well, my mom's parents were kind of university professors who were kind of liberal, and they were just like, oh, you, you know. Read Mao, whatever. Um, but I, I'm afraid that if you're a student activist, you might, you might die, whatever. And so, when when martial law was declared, I think my grandparents on both sides, their first reaction was just, "Thank God, my my kids are not going to be are are, are not are going to stay at home." Right. Um, that was kind of the first reaction um, because you couldn't organize anymore on campus. Of course, you know, it actually got worse because my dad decided to go underground and he and it, it actually became even more dangerous in the 70s because you, you couldn't openly uh, protest anymore. You just had to be an underground partisan of the Communist Party, which was which is effectively what happened to both of my parents in the 70s. 